Um, welcome everybody. It's a few minutes past, so I figured we should maybe just get started. Um, and folks could trickle in. Uh, we have a good group here already. Thank you for for uh, joining, and we're excited to connect, connect with you. And happy Friday. Um, I know I, I posted the the link in the chat. I'll post it one more time for folks who just entered. Um, but I'll go ahead and share my screen so that way we could uh, kind of go over the agenda or have the agenda in front of us as we move through the meeting. Um, so yeah, um, once again, thanks for coming. We appreciate you taking the time. I know we're, uh, many of us have very busy schedules, so uh, it's great to just kind of come together and connect. Uh, based on your surveys, we, after a little welcome and introductions, um, the kind of three main categories we noticed uh, in topics and, and, and points of discussion that folks are hoping to, to have uh, during this, this uh, conversation is online ordering. And from there, we have just like shortages, shortages, substitutions, um, and all these other uh, kind of subtopics. Um, distributions is a big one, talking about participant fluctuations and um, you know, how to provide feedback and things like that. Um, and then about data, particularly the new monthly report. And then we'll wrap it up um, uh, with some final thoughts and questions. So um, yeah, so just kind of starting with some announcements as some of you probably, many of you probably saw in my email. Um, uh, unfortunately, both sad and excited, uh, I will be moving on from Second Harvest. Uh, Tuesday will be my last day. Um, RJ, who is the agency admir agency uh, network manager before me will be taking reassuming that that role um, so you all be in good hands and paula will be on supporting um, still i'm going to be moving on to alameda county uh, food bank um, as a community organizer over there so um, definitely bittersweet but uh, it's been a great working with you all and, and i'm glad we get to connect um, uh, here uh, before that happens so um, i'll pass it on to rj um, for any other announcements that we might have thank you Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being with us. Um, like Nick mentioned, we really appreciate it. And we broke up this session, so hopefully this is more convenient for you guys to meet at a later time at another point in the week. Um, so yeah, Nick's moving on, and I'll be assuming uh, his last day is Tuesday, so Wednesday onward, feel free to reach out to me and still the agency's email. Um, also, we're going to be moving uh, the Partner Agency Conference, which, was, which is in October. We're going to be making it a virtual event because um, because of the spike in COVID cases. We just want to be really conscientious of gatherings in the near future. So we're just going to turn that virtual so we can make sure uh, just to organize it correctly rather than constantly be worried that we might have to turn it virtual anyway. Um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll reach out in the near future about that. Uh, we haven't sent out any information yet because we weren't sure how it was going to be um, what form it was going to take, um, but now we're pretty. Now we do know, so we'll be reaching out soon about that. Um, also, just so everyone knows, again, we we mentioned it in a previous email, but we're going to be closed September sixth. Um, so make sure to place your orders accordingly. Uh, that'll be the previous Thursday if you want it for that Tuesday, which would be September seventh. So yep, just to be aware, no deliveries or pickup. September sixth will be totally closed. Mm -hmm. You want to take uh, over the next topic, Nick? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, for, for RJ and I will be kind of doing um, a little bit of talking around cyclical sor shortages and sourcing issues, Agency Express, um, and then a little bit about uh, Shop Smart and the Rio and in-person shopping. Just some updates on that end, um, and then we'll we're going to kind of open up the dialogue. So uh, it'll just be more kind of front loaded of talking and then we'll we'll ha hopefully have a some some good conversations shortly after that so um yeah just uh some folks in, in the survey around the meeting um talked uh were wondering about cyclical shortages and other sourcing issues mentioning peanut butter and oil um so part of this is you know because of covid and supply chain issues um, from transportation to packing to you know the, uh, different parts of the supply chain um but uh, another reason is, you know, we are, we did recently on board a, um, a new uh, supply chain manager. And so they're just, you know, kind of getting their bearings straight still in terms of rhythms and ordering quantities and when to order, because oftentimes the lead time is a couple months out. Um, so so as, as they settle into the position, the more experience, we, we, we hope to have a more consistent source, um, stream of those staples in our pipeline. Um, so yeah, we appreciate the patience. And if there's any kind of things that like you're wondering about, like what happened to this, um, feel free to shoot us an email, um, call us, 
whatever, put in your WMS notes and we could kind of do our best to nudge and get in front of our supply chain um, to, to make sure that that gets um, in our warehouses. Um, so, and then um, uh, RJ, do you want to talk anything, anything I missed about supply chain sourcing issues um, or, and then I'll hand it off to you for Agency Express. No, yeah, definitely. Another thing we've been trying to fix is um, within our system, we have multiple warehouses now, and that wasn't represented in our in um, our inventory system. So oftentimes when product was when you would requested product and it wasn't available to actually because it was off site. So we're actively working on upgrading our system. So now uh, it'll be reflected on the menu if something is not physically in the warehouse where we're picking from. And we're also going to be um, we're also moving towards a new ordering system. Uh, we just got approval for, it's called Agency Express and lots of other food banks use it. Um, WMS is completely outdated at this point and our tech support says that they, it's, uh, we have to move on. So we're gonna be slowly rolling this out over the next like six months and we're gonna start with like five agencies that we're onboarding and so on. So um, we'll be reaching out to specific agencies for this onboarding process, but it's called Agency Express. It's gonna be, um, it's gonna reflect our inventory immediately. So when orders are placed, it's gonna immediately pull from our inventory. And so it should reflect a lot more accurately what we have in store. Um, so we're really excited to be rolling that out. I mean, we're still learning how to use it and then we'll learn, we'll learn how to train people and we'll learn all about it, all the new problems and interesting issues that we'll have along the way. Um, but yeah, just so you guys have that in mind that we're actively working on improving pretty much every part of the ordering process, but having a new ordering system is definitely going to be a big overhaul. So we're excited about that. Um, yeah, thanks, RJ. Um, and then in terms of uh, reopening in-person shopping, I think we might've mentioned this in the last um, uh, quarterly agencies meeting. Um, you know, we've been in, in touch with operations and our exec team. Um, we know that there's, you know, um, a lot of agencies, a lot of folks here uh, really prefer in-person shopping. We are expected to, to get a new cooler, which will be slated to be placed in the agency distribution center where it used to be. Um, so, uh, but I, we do know that it is, um, it is really beneficial for some of you to have that. So um, we could continue to, to lobby and, and, and try and uh, advocate on your behalf to, to find some creative ways in, in which we could kind of make that happen. Uh, like I said, we will have to be creative about it um, and it might take some time, uh, but you know, just to get a sense um, uh, of some of the benefits from you. So that way we could kind of have some, um, some like tangible, um, you know, reasons to, to bring to our operations and, and exec team um, to, to advocate for the reopening of in-person shopping. So I just wanted to open up that dialogue. Um, any thoughts around uh, why in-person shopping, the agency distribution center works for you as, a, as opposed to online ordering or how we've been. So uh, if anybody could go, feel free to unmute and share any of your thoughts here. We, we'd love to hear from you. Um, I'll go ahead and share. I'm Addie from Pajaro Valley Shelter Services. And I'm sorry, my camera is not working. I'm working from home right now. Um, no problem, Addie. But um, unfortunately, I haven't had the chance to shop um, in person because I've only been with the company for about a year and some months. So um, everything was online due to COVID. Um, so I haven't really had that experience. Thank you. Um, I mean, is, do you see any potential benefit or is anybody else there who does have experience who, who want to, who would like to talk about um, the benefits that they miss out on now? I will. Margo. Hey, Margo. Uh, um, you know, when you go shopping at the food bank, sometimes things come in right before you order, what, right before the order. So it's not on the WMS uh, order sheet or you run out before you get there. So you're really counting on something and it, you don't get it because it's, uh, it, it's out before uh, you, your order comes out. Um, especially if you're like me and I try to get things in really early so that there's not a problem. Um, so anyway, I've noticed that uh, it's just a lot easier to go in there and see what you have and then you can make a decision on the fly as to what you need to get. Definitely, that's definitely true to be able to see it and visualize what you need for sure. Mm -hmm. 
All right, yeah, thanks, Margo. Um, any other thoughts around uh, benefits of in-person shopping? All right, um, well, feel free to put anything in the chat um, uh, if that works better for you. Um, and yeah, like I said, it, it might take some time, but we'll continue the conversation um, and try and think of some creative ways uh, to bring that back. You know, we, we are, another factor is, you know, with the surge of the Delta variant, we're still, you know, trying to, to keep everybody safe. So that, that is another factor, but yeah, we appreciate your patience. And um, if there's anything that we can do in the meantime to, to kind of clarify, you know, uh, an item on the menu, just feel free to reach out. Um, and then I'll hand it off to, to RJ um, if you want to talk a little bit about ShopSmart. For sure. Uh, a lot of the agencies have reached out about ShopSmart in general, like whether we're going to be um, adding that program back to the food bank or whether there's going to be any charges on any of the products moving forward. And we just want to let you know that we that there should be no charges for the rest of the fiscal year. Our executive team, when they evaluated this fiscal year, they mentioned that they were going to make sure to not have any charges for the foreseeable future and that they would give us a big heads up if that ever happened again. Um, but just for those of you who haven't been around during that Shop Smart period, um, it was a program that we had for uh, agencies where we would purchase Rayleigh's product at a bulk discount. Um, so basically like uh, the price that they would offer the food bank and then we would just pass that discounted price on to the agencies. Um, and then we would also offer grants uh, to agencies for purchasing this product yearly or you know, bi-yearly, uh, biannually. So there's that program to just assist in getting, it was mostly dry goods. Um, so there's a lot of our dry goods, non-USDA product, obviously it's Rayleigh's. Um, so that's what that program was about. Now all that product is free of charge, obviously. So they're, they're, we don't have that in our system anymore. Um, we have been evaluating. So once we evaluate that in the future, I'm sure there'll be changes, but um, it's not gonna happen this year. So hopefully we're, we're foreseeing not until June, 2022, that we would need to reevaluate uh, that whole system just because we've already established our fiscal year. So, um, but we promise that we'll definitely, if we hear any whispers of that kind of thing, we we'll definitely reach out and you know, notify all the agencies of any type of changes like that. Mm -hmm. Um, any questions so far about ShopSmart, um, in-person shopping or supply chain that we've covered so far, Agency Express? All right. Um, like I said, feel free to use the chat um, or un unmute at any point. Um, yeah, we, we kind of want to open up the dialogue now. Um, so yeah, just feel free. It's an open forum. Um, these are just suggested topics from, from the, um, the survey, but if you have something else that you want to bring up, uh, uh, feel free. Uh, one thing that, that did come up is, is ordering for order online is with substitutions. Um, we have been trying to communicate with our warehouse to, to make sure that they're substituting certain, uh, you know, um, interchangeable things or related products um, and not replacing, you know, shelf stable with, um, you know, or perishable items or, you know, canned or for dry, certain things like that. But I just wanted to hear from your end, if you're still seeing some issues in terms of substitutions, uh, whether it's, you know, um, something that you don't want, too much of, you know, what you want or whatever it is. So if there's any issues there or suggestions or thoughts around substitutions, uh, feel free to unmute and share or, or drop some thoughts into the chat. Um, well, I guess we could open up the conversation. It doesn't have to be about substitutions. There's um, just anything ordering online. Uh, one, one thing that, that was a, a big point of conversation for the last meeting is just pantry needs. What non-food items or other desired uh, food items are you looking for? Um, uh, yeah, we could, like I said, we could do our best to get in front of our supply chain and, and try and get those into our warehouse. So uh, any thoughts around there um, or any other issues that's happening with, with your ordering? I'd love to hear from you. Hi, everyone. I have, uh, my name's Brenda. I work at the Davenport Resource Service Center. I'm filling in for Sophia, who normally comes to the quarterly meetings. But something that I see as a pantry need that hasn't been, or sometimes is available, sometimes it's not, it's milk shelf stable milk that's a big item for folks here in the north coast so um if that were to be more available or we were i haven't seen it the past couple of weeks in the order form so if that's something that could be looked at that would be great 
Definitely, Brenda. Yeah, that was a big one. Uh, in their last meeting, they also uh, asked for that. So we, we pushed that on to our food so our new supply chain manager, and she's been on the lookout. She's actually since Tuesday reached out to two uh, shelf-stable milk sources. So hopefully in the next, you know, hopefully soon she'll be able to find a new source for that. So we're very hopeful. <laughs> but yeah, we used to have a consistent supply, and we'd really like to maintain that consistent supply of shelf-stable milk again, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just oh, no, go ahead, oh, just so you guys know, I wanted to mention something that was mentioned in the last meeting. Um, people had mentioned that they uh, Hope Church mentioned they're on the lookout for egg cartons um, because uh, they didn't have enough to rebox their eggs, and they were also looking for grocery bags. Um, but in one of our other uh, agencies, let us know that um, you can actually order, you can ask uh, for grocery bags online from this website. Um, they have misprinted bags that they'll send to people for free. Um, so if you ever need to do your own bag bagging, then you could always reach out to them for free supplies. Um, so I thought we thought that was interesting. We'll just go ahead and post the link in the chat um, if you you know would like to use that source for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, uh, yeah, th uh, thanks for bringing that up. Egg cartons, um, I know that there's a lot of folks here who have some solutions around egg cartons, whether they're gathering them from donations uh, from the community. Um, so if there's anybody who has any thoughts around uh, egg cartons um, and getting those for your distributions, um, yeah, we'd love to hear from you as well. As far as the egg, am I... Should I raise my hand? How's it work? <laughs> You're good, oh, no, Dan. Go, go for, for it. it. Okay. Uh, as far as egg gardens, for uh, the last probably six months, we've been doing a community roundup of egg gardens. Uh, people used to collect them. They don't seem to collect them as much anymore because there aren't as many arts and crafts see places. That I, I don't know the reason. But hmm. what we've been trying to do is bring it back to a reuse, recycle frame of mind. And we're getting roughly 100 egg cartons every week. And what's really cool about the whole thing is they feel like they're donating, they're helping. Uh, just our people in the community are coming in with two egg cartons, all proud. And we look at them and say, thank you, mm -hmm. but eat more eggs. Uh, we, we need, we, <laughs> and, and, and people really feel good about it. So there's a movement here to, I mean, we're recycling cans. We're making money recycling cans or, or people are, uh, but egg cartons is one other thing. We don't need to be putting in the uh, landfill. So it's really a win-win situation. And, and really cutting up the flats and putting rubber bands on, it, it, it's just, there, there's got to be a better way. And I think we found it. And I think other people here, other agencies have found it also. Uh, I, I would like to, I, I don't know, transition uh, on, a, on a mild topic that's kind of been irking me for a while. And that is the produce bags that we receive. They're usually beautiful. You've got the, uh, the, the carrots, the sweet potatoes you got. And then usually on the top of it, uh, like yesterday, there was spinach in a bag that was old and leaking. And, mm. and I'm just, I, you know, I just kind of look at it every week. Uh, it's like wilted stuff on top and then the good stuff below. Uh, produce bags, I would think you would want to be able to last three or four days uh, if possible. So what I would recommend on that is get rid of the leafy greens that are uh, uh, shortening the value time of the produce bags. Definitely. And if that ever happens for any of the agencies, please reach out and let us know because we don't ever see those. We just, uh, that's completely like warehouse driven. So we depend on, you know, feedback from you guys. So definitely the good feedback for us to pass on to. Um, we have a, a, what is it called? We have a, a team member who just runs all the backpacking. So we can reach out to him. Mm -hmm. But to get to back, sorry for transitioning out. No worries. To get back to the egg cartons. It, it's really a community. Uh, it, it, here at Inner Light Ministries, it, we, we have a lot of the parishioners. We have a lot of the folks, uh, our guests, our clients. 
uh, that bring them back. And in, in really, it's turned out to be, we were just looking for egg cartons, but it's turned out uh, it, it's kind of a grassroots feel good type of a thing for the community also. They feel like they're doing something. And what I would like to do is communicate with other pantries and raise the level of participate for the people who want to um, uh, uh, give our clients uh, uh, you know, dozens or 18 eggs, uh, it is to just build a network and, and share eggs. Right now, we're getting about 100 a month. It, you know, if we can get three or four or five different pantries together, or agencies together, uh, we, we can keep some stuff out of the trash. We can reuse it. And we can make it easier for our guests to get the eggs at home because it's a protein we don't want to lose. Um, that's all. Definitely, yeah, and we should probably, yeah, we'll, we'll think about working on networking with that in the future, and we'll continue to have these quarterly agency meetings, so hopefully if we continue to bring that up in them and get people talking, yeah, it would be good to network more on that. Mm -hmm. and, and and Dan, or, or anybody who's who's soliciting community donations for egg cartons, how are, how are you getting the word out um, and, and getting those donations to your distributions? Mm. He's muted. Mm -hmm. oh. Are you talking, Dan? Could you unmute? I'm sorry. Uh, was someone else talking? Uh, uh, go for it. <laughs> okay. The way the way that we've been doing it, it all starts here. Uh, when we started the egg program, you know, we just let our uh, guests, our clients, know that uh, you know, bring them back, and they've been very good with it. We're telling them to bring out uh, their grocery bags back and to bring grocery bags. Um, I don't know how many pantries uh, agencies here are doing or back to or are doing the farmers market um, that we never went off of. We've been we've been uh, we added a drive through, but the farmers market is still going. And that's uh, a, a question that I have. Are our people, our agencies going back to the farmers market or with the new strain? Uh, uh, are they not, or did they never? I mean, I, I'm not sure about, um, you know, the the farmers market model, which I purchase, you know, I, I personally, uh, you know, don't want to let go of unless I really have to. And so far, we're outside, we're under a tent, and it's, you know, it's worked out fine so far. Um, but we're getting them through uh, Facebook. Uh, we're throwing uh, little notices. We need shopping bags. We need eggs. Whenever we let them know that the pantry is happening on Thursday, that type of thing. So it, it's really, it's more grassroots, but you have to kind of send it out there also. I got a whole bunch of them uh, from Los Angeles. I accidentally posted, I wanted eggs, egg cartons uh, back in, in, in somebody sent us up like 12 dozen eggs from, they said, you know, I'm down here in LA and I'll send them to you. So, so we can reach out, we can, we can get it, but I, I, we're, we're just trying to do it locally to start. But it really depends on how people or uh, agencies are distributing the egg cartons and, and uh, you know, what the system is. And I'm not sure what other agencies are doing. Totally, yeah. Um, just for us to speak about other program sites, uh, we're also dealing with that topic right now. Um, we have about six to seven program sites that are transitioning from drive-through to bulk style farmers market distributions again, um, just because a lot of the certain sites have just really been calling for that in the community. The need is addressed a lot more accurately when we have that style, and depending on the, what the distribution scenario is, um, like who the clients are. Um, but yeah, we're definitely seeing a big push to getting back to the farmer's market style. A lot of the other agencies mentioned that their clients have asked for that, just so there is a, a deeper level of intimacy and interaction there. So it definitely depends on your clients. But if anyone else wants to speak about that in, at their own agency, feel free. Um, this is Viola with Neighbors, Helping Neighbors. Hi, Viola. Um, we, we are currently still doing the drive-through distribution because 
our Grange still hasn't opened up to let guests in. So it's not an option for us right now. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, there used to be um, a Clot Margo, uh, Westview Presbyterian Church. Um, mm -hmm. There used to be uh, some people from Second Harvest that would come out and do a farmer's market and do classes, especially for Spanish speaking people. Is that going to be an option pretty soon again? That was really a good program and it, it was really beneficial. A lot of people would come in for that. Oh, was it cooking demonstration classes maybe the nutrition classes that nutrition classes. yeah for sure um that probably isn't going to be starting up very soon just because of the new delta variant um, we've been kind of pulling back from community um, engagement scenarios in the near future but we're hoping maybe in the next few months um, we could definitely ask um, the nutrition team as part of our department now so we can definitely like start that dialogue about when that would be we could always message out about that Um, yeah, I just wanted to, to highlight what um, uh, our friends from MCR posted in the chat. Uh, this came up in the last meeting, is posting to the neighborhood app or site. If you're not familiar with that, um, uh, uh, Paul or Amir, do you want to speak about the neighborhood app and, and how you're getting your, your aid card donations? Sorry, we're doing a little jumping around here. I hope that's okay with everybody. Um, was that a question about posting on Nextdoor? Oh yeah, sorry, Nextdoor, not neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, we, <laughs> we, we've had pretty good experience in Felton with that. And also we do encourage our clients to bring their cartons back. It's, it's not easy for everybody to remember that. So we do depend on a constant stream of new donations. So if they get low, then we um, post again on Nextdoor and some, Somebody probably posts that on Facebook as well. Yeah. So, and we make it very easy. We just say we take cartons of every type of every size, and then we deal with it after that. Nice. That's awesome, Paul. I'm glad that works out so well for you. That's yeah. sweet. Posting on, on Nextdoor also works really well for neighbors helping neighbors and our clients do um, bring back their cartons um, through the drive through Someone greets them at the window and they pass the egg cartons to us. Um, a reminder on Nextdoor really does help. Mm, nice. All right. Um, so uh, yeah, maybe we could go back, yes. Yeah. Thank you guys. Um, and then maybe we could go back to the discussion around um, farmer's market. Um, so uh, in terms of what, what our programs are doing, um, you know, some, some folks, you know, might've joined during COVID and, and, you know, getting your produce bags and dry boxes might have experience with ordering from WMS. Um, so uh, really kind of what, what we, our program sites are doing, our internal programs, um, you know, they're just kind of multiplying off oh, about 25 pounds per participant. If you get 100 participants, you know, then they calculate the total poundage that way. And if you want to do, you know, 60% fruits and veggies, then then that's kind of how they 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 kind of allocate the different um, uh, uh, weights um, and ratios that way. Or you could think about it like, all right, I you know, you know, this product comes with 12 cans per case, so then I have to figure out. Well, if I have 100 participants, it's just 100 divided by 12, and that's how many cases I order off WMS. Um, so just things like that um, in terms of ordering, but in terms of kind of safety and protocols, what our program sites are doing um, is they're putting the, the you know boxes or um, or the milk crates out uh, with apples or whatever produce is in it, um, and they'll put a sign there like three per household or whatever it is, um, and then um, and then folks just kind of. Um, and the volunteers will, you know, be managing uh, a couple, one or two items and then, you know, bagging it for them so they're not touching stuff. Um, one of our, our agency reps in the last meeting said, you know, they let clients, you know, pick their own because, you know, um, 
you know, they, they've been showing that spread isn't as, as likely to, to touch surfaces. It's more, you know, kind of airborne and things like that. So it really kind of depends on, uh, on what your volunteers and staff are comfortable with as well as your participants. So um, is there any other thoughts around, um, you know, converting to um, uh, bulk, uh, I guess, um, prepackaged um, distribution to bulk style, farmer's market style distribution and, and COVID safety measures around that? Um, or if there's any folks who are doing hybrid who have any um, best practice that they could share, uh, I'm sure we'd love to hear it. Well, in terms of the Davenport Resource Service Center, we've been doing the bulk produce bags and providing additional items like the canned goods and things like that. So it's slightly hybrid, but I know in the past before COVID, we had the farmer's market style and that was very popular. So we're hoping that sometime in the future, we might go back to that, but I don't see it happening anytime soon, just due to the Delta variant and just COVID cases. Um, but I do know that it's a popular um, way of doing food distribution for our community. All right. Uh, this, yeah, go ahead. This is Paul at Mountain Community Sources. Um, we surveyed our clients in June as to whether they'd be comfortable going back to farmer's market style and almost everyone said they would really like that. So in July, we went back and we, so we're into our second month back in the farmer's market style. And I, I suppose we all have some system like this, but I'll just share what our system is when we see what's actually delivered, let's say 600 pounds of carrots or something, we divide by the expected number of cl clients to come up with pounds and then figure out how many carrots make that portion and then one person who's in charge of produce puts a, um, a paint stick up with a plastic covered number that tells clients how many per household. And we have a system where a larger household gets double, even larger household gets triple. And then the most important thing is though, as we notice that things are going too quickly or not quickly enough, those numbers are changed so that we try to have food at the end for the last clients but we also try not to have very much food left over. So that's our system. Thanks for sharing, Paul. That's awesome. Appreciate it. Is it Mary? Did someone else want to speak? I'm sorry. Um. Yeah, if there's no other thoughts around, you know, COVID safety measures or just kind of, you know, distribution best practices um, or issues, uh, one thing that was also on the survey was increasing reach. So outreaching to different communities that be, might not be serving or just getting the, the word out of your distributions. Um, I know we mentioned, you know, Nextdoor, are, are folks using that? Are there other ways in which you're kind of spreading the word about your distributions? I mean, I guess also around that, um, are we seeing some participant fluctuations? What are folks seeing in terms of numbers? Uh, more or less folks coming over the past few months? Right. At Mountain Community Sources, our numbers um, never recovered really from the, the fire. So um, they're, they're lower than they used to be before the fire. Yeah, but they're at, they're at about 100 a, a week. All right, thanks, Paul. Um, so yeah, uh, like you said, feel free to, to put any thoughts in the chat or unmute at any point if you have any other thoughts around distributions or ordering online. Um, I know that there were some issues in terms of troubleshooting um, and best practice with the new monthly report. Um, so RJ, do you wanna, I'll hand it off to you. Do you wanna um, talk about sure. that or facilitate? <clears throat> and before we get to that, I also wanted to mention that uh, there was a segment in here about providing feedback for produce that isn't good. And like, uh, 
Dan mentioned, yeah, if anything happens, like you see something bad or something that you need to weed out, um, it's we've had quite a few issues recently, which just especially with big pallet, um, a few of our agencies pick up full pallets, and then that was difficult for us to inspect sometimes. And so we're trying to encourage our warehouse to create more inspection points. Um, so our safety coordinator is working with them with that right now. So if you ever have any feedback, don't feel like you're complaining. Definitely let us know if there's any bad quality out there and we'll make sure to pass that up the line so that the warehouse can be aware of it. Um, just, just so you all feel comfortable with that. Um, we are also going to reach out after this with a new shelf stable guide um, that was requested in our last meeting. Um, so we'll also pass that along about dates with expirations and whatnot um, so that you can uh, use it uh, with your participants or with your volunteers. Um, and just increase general knowledge about expiration dates and handing things out. Um, but we also, right now we wanted to talk about the new monthly reporting. Uh, we know that recently we asked for like the zip codes and we've been overhauling our reporting system and our database system. So really everything has been changing around here um, <laughs> in every element of our process. We've been trying to improve everything, but it also creates quite a few projects on our hands. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of elements in the air at this point. Um, but with the new monthly report, we're working with a new uh, software developer uh, who's, do who's donated his time to us to create a new database so we can, um, for all the information that you're providing us, we can use it correctly and create a correct database where we can pull it for grants and um, any uh, infrastructure supports or needs we might have, you know, for, uh, uh, for data. So yeah, I just so you guys know. So if you ever have any issues with the monthly report or you need some more explanation, you know, walking you through it or best practices, um, I know we don't have a digital way of doing that, that, that right now. And our new consultant is also gonna be working on a way for you to digitally submit your numbers again, like we used to do with the Google survey, um, but something more robust that we can work with moving forward. Um, that'll be as streamlined as possible so that it's really easy for agencies to upload their information. That's really one of the main criteria of this is making everything as easy as possible. Um, so yeah, so if there's ever any feedback on that too, like anything's troubling or anything just doesn't seem clear, um, we're always here for you for, you know, trainings or instructions or um, any new things that we should provide for agencies moving forward. It's just good to know where there might be confusion around that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, feel free to let us know now or later in the chat and emails anyway, we're always here for you. Um, so yeah. Right. Um, so there's maybe no thoughts around the, the new monthly report. Um, like RJ said, feel free re to reach out for us or, or speak here. Um, maybe we could talk about the demographic support. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we, 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 oh, uh, Marco, did you have something to say? Yeah, I have a question. For I, sure. You know, I have a soup kitchen. And mm -hmm. so um, I have sometimes people that come once a month and then there's other people that might come 20 times a month and might eat 20 meals a month. Do you want me to do an average or I, I've been counting them. I counted them all last month and gave you unduplicated, but do you want more of an average kind of a thing? Um, I think average would be, be unnecessary, but uh, we, we do encourage you to use your personal knowledge. Like if the agencies feel like, yes, I haven't seen certain people quite a bit. So I should probably like, because the unduplicated means, yeah, it would only be their first time visiting um, your, your agency for the month, but we try to, we know it's difficult to calculate for people that don't track every individual person. So we understand that there's gonna be a level of just like personal understanding whether you'll manipulate the numbers maybe to be more accurate, um, but it, it doesn't need to be like an average where you're just like kind of rate lowering that entire bar down. So it's all right, it's better to just, it, encapsulate as many as possible, I would feel, you know, just so we're, because on our end, our data person also kind of manipulates some of the numbers, knowing that there might be difficulty um, doing unduplicated. So she might also be doing her own math, averaging thing, as well as you guys doing your own math. So it, I feel like it would be best just to give us as much as possible, just so it's just, if it's duplicated individuals, then we'll just try to compensate for that. That's, that'll work. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, but the demographics report wise, we just emailed out about that. Um, uh, if you didn't receive an email about it, it was because we actually did a preliminary campaign in April uh, that was also demographic. So about 22 agencies already did their demographics earlier in the year. So we're reaching out to everyone else to fill out the rest of our uh, agency network. And that's not due again until August, or I mean, October 31st. 
Um, so, and it's the same, we, we haven't changed at all since last year, except for we did ask, we included two more questions uh, about CalFresh, because um, we're really pushing this next year to integrate CalFresh uh, into agencies just to raise awareness. And if you ever need their help at distributions or information, brochures, pamphlets, anything, um, then feel free to reach out to us because we want to bolster you guys with information about CalFresh. And if any of your participants are ever interested, then you can give them a hotline card. You can have them reach out to our hotline or the front desk and we'll make sure to take care of them. Uh, but so there's two more questions in the demographics. It's, do you have CalFresh? Are you interested? So we're just hoping to capture a little more of that data from your people and then we can try to reach that need. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any questions around the demographics or how it's changed or you know how often you need to because we're capturing one month again of just like distributions so mm -hmm. and, and yeah just to echo um mm -hmm. rj um, what rj was saying around calfresh um is that you know we say here that really calfresh or, or snap benefits um, are, are really the first line of defense around um, food insecurity and hunger um, because it does give folks, you know, more agency in terms of when and where they and, and what they could, could um, you know, purchase in terms of their food needs. Um, and then our, our, our distributions, our agency network and our programs are, are really kind of the second line. So, um, you know, there was just a, an increase, I think, of 25% of, of SNAP benefits. Um, so we're, we're, we're going to be seeing a, a big increase in benefits that, that folks will be getting. Um, so we're really trying to bolster the relationships between um, our conference team who are doing outreach and, and, and getting folks access to those benefits um, and you are agency partners. So we'll be kind of reaching out in terms of, um, you know, what that, what that might look like. Um, we'll probably be having a CalFresh training um, uh, at the partner agency conference, um, you know, which will be now virtual in October, um, and just other kind of you know information about how to, to connect folks to benefits. So, um, yeah, we're really excited to to kind of foster that partnership and, and hopefully, um, you know, in a way that works for for everybody. So, um, yeah, just uh, just to let everybody know about that. Um, and yeah, are there any other thoughts that we we haven't covered in the meeting so far, or something that you want, any questions? Um, best practices that we want to share, or, or just kind of ideas. Um, feel free to feel free to share now before we wrap up here in these last few minutes. I can share something about the way we do eggs. We get we cut up the egg carton that the fifteen dozen comes in, and then make six packs, and then we roll them up in uh, stretch plastic so you can see them and stuff and they hold together so when they go in the shopping bag mostly on top <laughs> then uh, there's no problem with them and we give out a dozen at a time unless somebody asks for more oh nice yeah i like the idea of plastic wrap yeah all right appreciate that okay um just to keep a um, uh, an eye out in your schedules. The next quarterly meeting will be November or December. Let us know if you have any preferences in that. Um, you know, November would definitely, well, either of these would but definitely be before the, the holidays, um, the week of the holidays, uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving, and all that good stuff. So, um, yeah. So, RJ, is there anything that we want to cover that I, that I, that we might have missed, or if there's anybody else out there who has anything to share, um, feel free to speak now. Um, yeah. Um, otherwise, we could uh, kind of give you guys some time back on this Friday. So, yeah. Um, I have a quick uh, uh, question. Uh, in, do I have the floor? Yep. Go for it, Dan. Okay. Sorry, I'm not used to the Zoom. <laughs> Stay away from this since uh, COVID <laughs> started. Now I have to do it. Um, I got a call. Uh, I've been I've been looking for sweet corn. A lot of people are saying sweet corn is such a wonderful uh, thing this time of year. And in uh, uh, someone about an hour ago, or just before the meeting, said UCSC Farm 
um, used to, if they don't still deal on the local level where we can possibly go in there. I don't know if we're picking. If, if there's someone else familiar with UCS Farm, I just heard about it. But but really, what, what I would like to see uh, through Second Harvest is more local purchasing, more seasonal. Uh, uh, well, you know, I guess in this case, simply sweet corn. Well, wouldn't it be a wonderful thing? And, and I'm sure that there's a few farms within uh, a few miles that could probably supply us. And it may be on a donation, you pick it. Uh, you know, we can do, uh, uh, you know, volunteer type things. This farm's doing this. Let's everybody go over and pick it up and we'll, we'll have, uh, it, it, we, I don't know. Uh, what what is the potential of of uh, dealing more with local farms, or are we already? Good question, Jan. Yeah, we already do get quite a few donations from local sources. It depends on the size and the type, um, also the quality, obviously. Um, sometimes they just kind of want to dump stuff on us uh, to dispose of it, and so that we have to be wary of that. Um, but I don't, I will have to push the corn question up to the or supply chain, um, just because I don't think we, I've ever seen corn here while I've been here. So I'm not sure what the sort, if there's any sourcing issues with that or what's going on. But yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, and if you guys ever have any other needs about that, like, hey, we're just looking for this, always feel free to reach out. And, and we have a running list with our supply chain manager because she's still learning what, co what comes from where so that she can see what the needs are and what the priority is for that. And then she'll have it in mind as she continues to look. So that's, we've been trying to continue that narrative, that conversation constantly. So we have that uh, tracking Excel for desired items. So yeah. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to let you know, um, yeah, if you ever, you know, if we ever send you some, some produce that isn't looking good, um, I know RJ mentioned this, just wanted to, to mention this again, we do put this in um, a process improvement log and, and send it to our food safety manager, um, and it's really about us looking in, in for, for points of quality control um, as we receive pull and, and get stuff on our trucks. So we're trying to figure out kind of the best systems and we are always trying to improve that. So anytime that you you get a um, produce that's bad or any product that, that's not looking good um, and you don't feel good about distributing, um, it, it really helps if you could take a photo of it um, and then email it to us um, or whatever works best for you. Call us, put in your WMS notes and, and we could um, let our food manager know about that, food safety manager know about that. So thank you. That is a good point, Nick. Yeah, a food safety coordinator has asked that as, of us multiple times. Whenever there's an issue, he's just like, where's the picture? So yeah, we always kind of pass that request on to you guys. So yeah, send us the gross picture, send us whatever you need to show. If there's pallet tags, you know, any markers from us, the box that came in so we can go track down who the distributor was that might have provided that to us. And maybe we can track it to its original source where it might not have been the best. So it's always that, it's it's a hunt for us. So, and, but it's definitely worth doing, but we, we always like to know uh, where we should be inspecting and hunting the most. So. Yeah, we really appreciate that feedback. All right. Um, yeah, well, thank you all again for taking the time. Um, as Larger was saying, if anything pops into your heads or comes up, um, um, you know, throughout the weeks, so feel free to reach out. Um, and um, yeah, I hope you got some, some good information here. I, I really like the discussion about the egg cartons. Those are really good ideas that were shared. So appreciate all the, all the, the sharing around that. Um, and yeah, just wanted to say thanks everybody. It's been, it's been a pleasure. So appreciate you all. Yes. Thank you, Nick. And good luck um, at your next destination. And welcome back, RJ. Yeah. Thank you. No, we'll, I'll be here for you. So yeah, feel free to reach out. Hmm. Take care, folks. Yep. You guys have a great Bye Friday. Have Thanks for spending time. time with us. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. Have a good one, Marco. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for all the hard work. Appreciate Always. It, Jan. Thank yes, you, Jan. Good one. <laughs>
Do you all have any uh, questions or wanted to check in about anything? Might just be figuring out how to log off. That's fine too. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're still here for you just in case. <laughs> Alrighty. All right, y'all. Well, we're gonna end the meeting. So I hope everybody has a good one. See you, Jan.